Happy Easter. On behalf of Bishop Lou Tilka, the Bishop of Peoria, and Father Bill Miller, the rector of this church, I welcome you all to the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Immaculate Conception. What a great joy it is to celebrate Easter with you all this morning. Just a few notes before we begin our liturgy today. Immediately after the second reading, the cantor will sing what is known as the Easter sequence. Please remain seated for that. Following that will be the Alleluia that you are used to. Please stand as that is sung. After the homily, there will be a renewal of baptismal promises by the people. Servers will come out to relight your candles from the Easter candle. Please stand. And as Bishop asks us to renew our baptismal promises, please respond clearly, I do. For the distribution of Holy Communion, we ask that those seated in the side pews come through the center, come through the middle, and then down the center to receive. All of the music for today's liturgy can be found in the programs available to you in the vestibule, as well as online using the QR code in the pew in front of you. Please rise. Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia, a triumphant holy day, alleluia, who did once upon the cross, Then let us sing Alleluia Unto Christ our heavenly King Alleluia Who endured the cross and grace which he endured, alleluia, our salvation hath procured, alleluia, now above the sky he's king, Yeah. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. We gather this wonderful morning with the good news that the Lord has risen from the grave. The Lord has completed our salvation. Jesus has saved us. Because of his passion, his death, and now resurrection, we know that our sins have been forgiven and that we share in the newness of life that Christ has given to us. To ready ourselves, therefore, to enter into these sacred mysteries, we pause for a moment, calling to the minds that we still sin and we still need God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. <clears throat> He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets hear witness that everyone who believes in him will, forgive, for, will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. <clears throat> Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. His right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live anew, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. 
The word of the Lord. Vite me pasali laudes, himolen Christiani, amos reden vidoves, Christus in uncem patri, reconciliavit, decatores, mors alvita rubello, confliere mirando, dovite morturi, Renevirus di nobis Maria, prividis tia via, sopore Christi ventris, et gloriam vida la sorgentis, angeli contestes, sodarium et vites, Sorax e Christus femea, precede suos in Galileam. Simus Christum turexe, amor tus vere, tu nobis victorex miserere. Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy, with joy in the Lord. Hallelujah. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone re removed from the tomb. So she ran, and got, went, she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there and did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, 
He went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. We gather this morning with great joy in our hearts, knowing that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. This fact, our faith in him, changes everything in the way that we live our lives. For we know that God has saved us, that our sins have been forgiven, that the Lord has offered to us the promise of new life, and of course, his promise to remain with us, the church, always. What a great joy it is to celebrate this Easter Sunday morning. In our gospel passage, which is from the Gospel of John, and it's only one of a number of what we call a parent's narratives throughout the gospels, the stories of Jesus manifesting himself, risen from the dead to the disciples. There are two realities that always shape and under, our understanding of the resurrection, the empty tomb, and the presence of Jesus being seen. Jesus who calls his disciples back together and reveals himself to them. This morning's gospel, Mary Magdalene, one of the disciples, yes, a disciple of Jesus, went to see him at the tomb and is, a, is amazed to find that the stone has been rolled back and that the tomb is empty. She runs to tell the others, and in particular, Peter and John, the beloved, they too run now to see the empty tomb. And when they get there, they enter and they find only the burial cloths. Peter is perplexed. John the beloved enters and believes. Can you imagine the look on their faces? Could you imagine how they would be seen you know, one of the great gifts of artists is that they're able to interpret or to give us an idea, use their imaginations to show the face of the subjects that they paint. In one of the other apparent narratives, it's the story of Jesus appearing after the resurrection to the disciples when Thomas is not there. And so Jesus comes back a second time so that he can reveal himself to Thomas. Thomas who said, I will not believe until I can put my finger into the nail prints and the hand into, my hand into his side. In my office, I have a painting, a copy of a painting, not the original, but a copy of a painting of Thomas's face when Jesus appears to him and invites him to do what he said he wanted to do, put his finger in his nail marks and his hand in his side. The artist Ruben Ferreira is amazing in the amount of emotion that he can capture in this image of St. Thomas. In the image, Thomas's jaw is dropped, his mouth is gaping wide open, his eyes are as big as saucers. You can see the wonder and the amazement that he has seeing Jesus stand before him. The risen Lord the one who had told him that he would come back. It is amazing. And I love the fact that every time somebody comes into my office and they see that painting, they say, well, who is that? And I get to tell that story of the artist's interpretation of that encounter with the risen Jesus for Thomas. And then I always ask the question, how would you look if Jesus 
risen from the grave, came and stood in front of you. Would your mouth be dropped? Would your eyes be wide? Would it be a look of despair or fear? Or would it be a look of excitement and joy? The fact is, is that we see Jesus in our world today because he has risen from the grave. He stands before us regularly. He promised that we would be united to him through our baptism. So anytime we look into our own face or the face of another person, we see the reflection of Jesus. And we see Jesus in so many other ways as he told us that he would always be present to us because he gave his body and blood, his soul and divinity for our salvation. Every time we gather and celebrate the Eucharist at the altar, we see Jesus present to us in the most precious sacrament that we are privileged to receive. You see, folks, on this Easter day, we must recognize that time and time again, even in a world that is often dark, even in a world that is colored by sin, even in a world where there is violence and war, we still see the face of the risen Lord. We still see Jesus because it is in his look and his desire to be one with us that he is constantly coming and showing us his face, which is always the face of God's divine love. Could you imagine the faces of those disciples on that first Easter morning, that time when they ran to the tomb to see the face, see Jesus, and there they didn't find him because the tomb is empty. He has been raised from the dead. And yet time and time again, as we hear in the scriptures, Jesus continued to show himself to them, to show them that he had been raised from the dead and to invite them to share now in the gift of eternal life. But I think there's another dimension to our celebration on this Easter Sunday, not only the fact that we see the risen Jesus in our lives, it's also what he did to the disciples which was to commission them. He told them to go and tell others. Again, throughout these apparent narratives, we hear time and time again that those disciples who first recognized an empty tomb or first recognized that Jesus was standing in their midst, they went out into the world, often with great haste, to share the good news, to tell others that they could now see the risen Jesus, even if they had yet to encounter him. That is so important to us. For like Mary Magdalene, who went to the tomb and found it empty, like Peter and John, who went and found it empty, like the disciples who gathered, like Thomas, and saw Jesus come to them and reveal himself to them, he ate with them, he prayed with them, he gave them the gift of the Spirit. In all of those cases, he then said, go out into the world, go share the good news, our first reading said we are commissioned by the Lord and our mission is to show the world the face of Jesus who lives in us. How would you look if Jesus came and stood in front of you today to reveal the fact that he is alive? That he's been risen from the grave. Would it be like that painting that hangs in my office? Mouth wide open, eyes as big as saucers? Would your face be filled with fear, anxiety, doubt? Or would your face be filled with joy and happiness at the glory of seeing Jesus? Just imagine that. Just imagine how it would be. But more so, think of how it could be if you took your face as a reflection of the face of Jesus of God's divine love, and you shared that with the world. Because that's the mission, that's the commission, that's what the Lord is asking of us.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have, been reburied, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? I do. do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Christians all rejoice and sing. Now is the triumph of our King. To all the world glad news we bring. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord of life is risen today. Sing songs of praise along his way. Let all the earth rejoice and say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise we in songs of victory that love, that life which cannot die, and sing with hearts uplifted high. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your name we bless, O risen Lord, and sing today with one accord the life laid down the life restored alleluia 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 to god the father god the son to god the spirit always one we sing for life in us begun. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Enlivened by the joy of the Easter Alleluia, we turn to the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. For the church, the presence of the risen Christ in the world, may God's mercy and grace be upon her in her sacred mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer. For all those who were received into the church last night, may the grace of the sacraments of the initiation fill their hearts with faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those suffering in soul, mind, or body, especially in war-torn parts of the world. May they find consolation in the promise of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this assembly, 
May the love and the truth that God has poured into our hearts sustain us in all we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will respond to the petitions we voice in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of this parish for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, marked as Christ's own forever, may the risen Lord receive them into the fullness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God of wonder, hear our prayer and strengthen our faith in Christ's victory over sin and death. For he is Lord now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and extinguish your candles.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church was wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. And therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the, the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 At the Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the risen one. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we celebrate this Easter morning, we also pray for one day complete unity in the Eucharist. If you are not Catholic, 
for our Catholic and otherwise unable to receive communion this morning, we invite you to come forward to receive a blessing. To receive a blessing, please cross your hands over your chest like this to show the minister that you wish to receive a blessing. Thank you. High feast we sing, praise to our victorious King, who has washed us in the tide, flowing from his pierced side. Praise we him whose love divine is his sacred blood for.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wish you all a very blessed Easter. May the joy of this day not only remain in your hearts today, but as you take up the mission that Christ has entrusted to us, may you go show the face of Jesus' love into the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to the feast that are celebrated in eternal joy. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. In the temple of the skies, let the mountains skip with gladness and the joyful valleys ring with hosannas in the highest to our Savior and our King. Alleluia, alleluia, like the sun out the wave he has risen up in triumph from the darkness of the grave he's the splendor of the nations he's a lap of endless day he's the very lord of glory who is risen up today Alleluia, alleluia, blessed Jesus, make us rise from the life of this corruption to the life that never dies. May your glory be our portion when the days of time are past and the dead shall be awakened by the trumpet's mighty blast.